This battle is not ours. It's the Lord. And if we hold our peace and let the Lord fight our battle, then victory and victory shall be ours. But how do we move in change? How do we transform ourselves to be better and live a life that is pleasing in God's eyesight? How do we do the things that God will command and have us to do? Well, there are two points. Just two points and I'm going to sit down. Two points. First of all, you must stand up by faith. You must stand up by faith. Stand up by faith. I don't know who I'm helping here, but you got to stand up by faith. And here it is in our text. Church say stand up. Here it is right here in our text. Verse 6. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been down a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another step is down before me. Jesus said, Take up thy bed, rise up and walk. Rise, take up thy bed and walk. First of all, in the, by standing up by faith, there must be a moment of self-examination. Self-examination. As a result of self-examination, Jesus spoke the word to this man who had been 38 years needing, but not knowing transformation, hoping, but not having transformation, waiting, but not walking in transformation. Hermeneutically and exegetically speaking, Jesus is saying, rise to your feet, get to your post, get to your place, and get in your position. And as we move towards change and we are fed jumpers of agitation, don't panic, just stand. Don't worry, just stand. Don't fret, just stand. But is there anybody in here who will stand up by faith? Then not only is there a moment of self-examination when you stand up by faith, but there's a moment of self-elimination. Let me help somebody. Somebody in here probably got some folk in their life that's caused nothing but a lot of havoc, a lot of trials, a lot of tribulations. It may be a girlfriend, maybe a girlfriend, maybe even somebody that you are not equally yoked to, supposed to be married to. Sometimes in those people, you got to eliminate. You just got to give them the boot and say, May the Lord God bless you real good. May the Lord watch between me and you while we're absent from another. You got to tell them that you better not call me no more. You better not text me no more. Any way of social communication, you better not do it no more. If you try to kiss me through the phone, I'm going to hang up the phone and put it on there. All I can say is that you've been eliminated and dismissed from my life. Young lady, let me help you. If you got somebody in your life that says, Shona, let me get your digits, that person only wants to hit it, quit it, and forget it. And you think that it's the best that you ever had, it's probably the worst that you ever had. All I can say is drop that person and the Lord got somebody in store for you. And when you stand on faith and in His Word, things begin to change. God begins to elevate things in your life. I'm a living witness that when you're in school and you think that you can't remember, God will put that thing into your remembrance and have you to make an A on that test the next week. I'm a living witness that when you trust in God, that nothing can happen with it to you. When you trust in God and you stand up on His Word and stand by faith, you can see them with the drugs and you can see them passing the kibbutzi and the jumps around. All you can say is that you move because I'm not made by that. I'm moved by the Spirit of God. When they pass the drinks around, I'm saying, I'm not going to get drunk because the Bible says, be ye not drunk with the wine of the world, but be ye drunk with the wine of the Spirit. And all you got to do is you got to stand up when you've been lied on. Stand up when you've been abused. Stand up when you've been talked about. Stand up when you've been blitzed out. Stand up when you've been called everything but a child of God. When you stand up, you stand still and you see the salvation of the Lord. I'm standing on a rock today because he picked me up, turned me around, and he placed my feet on solid ground. By faith, you can make it. By faith, 
who can take it. I'm free who can do action in the possible. I want to preach to somebody in here who lost a job because of this so-called recession. I'm going to say it ain't no recession because God will supply your every need of glory to his riches in glory. If God was able to help the people when the Great Depression back in times there, he's able to supply your needs in 2009. And even though some care is unaffordable, just know that Jesus is a chief physician. You ain't got to worry about no doctor on health care because Jesus got you in his care. Bible says, cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. No reason a lot of us probably around fellowship time don't want to shoot nobody in. Probably got him in a tiger in your purse. Because it is got that old swine flu. All I can say is if you believe in God and stand up on faith, no weapon, no sickness, no disease shall come against you. You just have to stand up and get up by faith. I don't know what's going on in this church today, but you got to shout even when you don't want to. Because it's yours. There ain't a devil in hell that can take it away from you. What God has for you, you just got to stand up and pray and receive it. You know something, MC Hammer had a song a long time ago that said, keep this is good and enough. I like to say that we have been on the ship too long and it's not that bless you. You can look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you can't touch this. I've been on the ship too long. You can't touch this. God has a blessing for me. You can't touch this. I wasn't trying to preach like this, man. But the Bible is the Bible. 